Hey guys, it's me, Oppie from Oppie's World, and today I'm going to teach you how to make Spigot Java plugins. What is Spigot? Spigot is a version of Craft Bucket that was optimized for performance and configurability. What this means is the Spigot developing development team took the Craft Bucket code and made it better for your it made it better for your server. Okay, so what you see in front of me is called in uh, on my screen. What you see on my screen is called an ID or an integrated development environment. That is where your code will be written. That's where you'll compile it into the plugin file. And the second thing you will need is any version of the spigot jar file. I will personally be using the latest one as of this, the time of this video, which is spigot 115.2. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is install the integrated development environment, your IDE. I have it pre-installed, but you can have Eclipse, that's what I'm using, IntelliJ, you could write it using a re regular text editor and compile it manually. But I prefer an IDE such as Eclipse or IntelliJ. Okay, so if you have never used an IDE before, just play around, tr maybe try switching some appearances open some windows, maybe make a file or two, just for understanding this IDE. Once you've done that, we're going to create our first project. So we're going to right-click, New Project. So if you're using Eclipse and you've never used it before, you're going to have this open and just project. We don't want that. We're going to close that tab and open Java, Java project. This is because Spigot is programmed in Java. So let's hit next and let's name this file. Let's name this, I don't know, plug er, let's name this my first plugin. We need to make sure we're using Java SE 1.8 or a specific project one of Java 8 Oracle. I would personally prefer Java SE 1.8 just because you um, it's pre it's predefined. So we're just gonna hit finish, and we have this thing known as my first plugin that has a source folder that's empty and this large amount of comp uh, of things with like. Java dot base dot compiler dot logging a bunch of things, but we don't need those. we don't need to know those. So once we have your project and your source, we're gonna right click your your so your source folder and hit new package. A package is creating a group of folders at one time. If you own a domain, uh, you should title, so let's say uh, you should title your package that domain. So let's say I held the domain plugins.com. What you should name your package is com.plugin.plugin dot dot plugin name. If you don't own a domain, you should do me.yourname.plugin name. So let's fill that in. So once you have that done, you're going to get this white box if you're using Eclipse. And that is your package. If we right click it and create a class, you will get this GUI. Now, if you're if you're making a plugin like we're doing right now, and this is your first one, I recommend titling this main and then just finishing it. 
once you do that and this all loads, you're, you're going to notice that the package we made has just changed colors signifying that there are stuff in that package. So I'm going to just fix the indent. And so let's understand this code that's pre-generated. We get the package declaration. We're going to declare the folders it's in. And then we're also going to declare this thing called public class main. Now the class was from making that class file in the public means that we can access that we can access things and and we can access um everything public using this file and other files can access this this is important per se let's say we have a config we want to generate that config from main and then import it to where we need that Okay, so once we have this, we are going to create a build path. What this means is we are getting a set of libraries. We're getting, we're importing a library to this plugin. So we're going to right click the plugin again and go to build path and then configure build path. Once you do that, you'll get source, projects, libraries, order, and export and module dependencies. We're going to go to libraries and hit add external jar, select the jar file and hit open. Now let's apply and close. So we apply and close and you notice we get this new thing known as reference libraries showing you the thing you just referenced. It's going to have all this stuff, it's going to have your, it's going to have all the Minecraft uh, code, it's going to have the spigot code, and it's going to have the bucket code. So let's close this. Okay, so now that we have referenced it, let's write the first piece of code. X extends, extends, Java, Java plugin. What this means is we are going to take a file from Java plugin, I don't know from where, and we're going to have our compiler more or less copy and paste it in. If you notice, this has an error. So let's hover over and see what the error is. It says Java plugin cannot be resolved to a type. There are three things, fix project setup, create a class, and import Java plugin from org.bucket.java plugin. Now, if you notice me scrolling in here, you notice there was a thing called org.bucket. So I'm thinking we should import this. Import, and let's always save. So nothing, if something mess, if we mess up something, we can always restore it. So it seems to have fixed the problem now, and that was actually the correct solution. So now we have the basis of a plugin. All we have to do is write two more uh, two more things in this file, and then make a very short file called plugin.yml, which I will get to in a minute. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna we're gonna make an on enable. What this means is we are going to create a, f uh, we're going to call a function from Java plugin that on the enable of this plugin, it will run the following code. So this is public. It can be accessed. Anyone can access it. Public void on enable with parentheses and curly brackets. Now, what, the moment you type it, you should get a bunch of red because the the because your IDE is still registering it. But once you type it out all fine, you you notice you have the color scheme of public and void the same, and then on enable, your uh, green. Next, what we're gonna do is tell the console your plugin has started up. So we're gonna go get logger we're going to get the log console 
and we're gonna give it info of my first plugin has start has been enabled. What this means is the moment the, the moment your server starts up and the plugin loads, it's gonna send my first plugin has been enabled. That's great. Let's finish up with this file. Next, we're gonna write public void on disable. And what this means is you're going to do the exact opposite. You're gonna run something when the plugin is disabled. So we're gonna get logger. We're gonna get the logger console dot info and we're gonna send to it my first plugin has been disabled. So when your plugin stops, it's going to say my first plugin has been disabled. Let's make one more file so then our plugin is registered by Spigot. So we're gonna right click the switch folder and go new other. Let's select file and hit next. And we're gonna name this plugin.yml. This is one of the only mandatory file names. You could name main.java anything you want, but if you're trying to make your plugin accessible, that's what you should call it. So in here, we're gonna declare your main. What you're gonna do is you're gonna write the package with the file you just created, main, but you're not gonna include the dot Java. So we're gonna write me dot opi dot my fir er, first plugin dot main. And we have two more lines of code and then we're all done with this plugin for this first episode. So let's name this plugin. I'm gonna name this my first plugin. There shouldn't be any spaces, just one line. I you can use underscores and dashes. Okay, now let's give it one last mandatory thing. Let's give it a version. Version 1.0. And that's it. Th that is the only mandatory part. But personally, I think I should credit myself for this. So let's write authors. Oh, it's author, my bad. Author, um, I'm just gonna put Oppy. The reason I'm putting the bracket, the square brackets, is so that I could insert a space, but I don't recommend it because occasionally it doesn't get rendered. So next, we're gonna, we're gonna run right click, export as a jar file. The reason jar file is because that's what all because spigot is made in Java and it's only able to run jar file. So we're gonna go next and we're not gonna select project or dot class path. And I actually have a plugin name already inserted here. You could really name it anything without a space dot jar. So let's hit finish and let's go run our server. Okay guys, so I have loaded my server and straight off looking at this, you'll notice right here we have my first plugin. It um, says enabling my first plugin version one. My first plugin has been enabled. If let's say we run slash PL or slash plugins, we notice we have Staffworks Plus, Speedgun, and my first plugin. If we scroll up, we notice we have legacy plugin, my first plugin, doesn't specify an API version, which we will get to in the next video. But if we notice a two, three lines below that, it says loading my first plugin, version one. Now let's quickly turn off the server and quickly take a very fast look at what this is. So let's reload actually just as that will, without shutting down this server, it will give me a f straight up reload of plugins. So it says right here, 
disabling my first plugin version one and then right afterwards it says my first plugin has been disabled now thank you guys for watching please like and and s subscribe i spent a lot of time on this video and i really hope you guys enjoy it um if we can get two likes on this video we will we will continue on with the series so please please like and thank you for watching bye